That's Steve Bannon, the president's former chief strategist, saying that the midterm elections are a referendum on Trump. But what would a less than stellar performance mean for the Democrats? Let's discuss first, S.E. Cup. Uh, let's also note that you have a new CNN show that's debuting Saturday, and we're all very excited about it. S.E. Cup Unfiltered, starting. August 25th, Saturdays at 6 I didn't p.m. Know that was, I didn't know you were going to do that. You didn't know that? Yeah. I thought that was the only reason you were here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, thank you so much uh, for, for, uh, for, for that plug. And then let me just say... <laughs> thank you. So I want to ask you, uh, so Steve Bannon, obviously he might be trying to get back in President Trump's good, good graces, mm -hmm. but it seems to me like that might, this might not be a bad strategy, convincing Republican voters, hey, the Democrats, this is all about impeachment, this is all about Trump. It's obviously... Republicans, I mean, Democrats want it all to be about Trump, too, yes. although not necessarily about impeachment. Well, yes, it is, it is a good strategy, and it's one the president should pick up on. Steve Bannon understands the game for midterms is turnout. When President Trump gets up and says, these, these midterms don't matter as much as my election did, mm -hmm. that's the opposite of the game. When uh, Ronna McDaniel uh, Romney uh, of the RNC gets up and says, this isn't, you know, this loss wasn't that big a deal, the blue wave isn't coming, that's the opposite of the strategy that, that Republicans should be taking. Steve Bannon is right to install fear in uh, the hearts and minds of Republicans who would believe that Democrats are out to get President Trump. Congresswoman, if the Democrats take the House, yes. are you going to, uh, it, will Democrats begin impeachment proceedings? Well, I, I don't think so, but let me just tell you, I think there's a lot of things on our agenda. The number one thing on our agenda is health care. Mm. After that, we have to look at jobs. It's great that unemployment is low. However, people need better jobs. They certainly need better wages. And then all of the investigations, uh, that absolutely needs to happen because we know that the Republicans have blocked every investigation. But to think that impeachment would be number one on our agenda, I don't think that that's the case. We have to deal with health care. Is Bannon's strategy a smart one, you think? Oh, it's absolutely the right strategy. And, and the president should, as S.E. Cup say, adopt it. And uh, to create a sense of urgency. This is a, a turnout election. And if what you've seen in every election where Republicans have either lost or had margins much closer than they should have been, is Democrat turnout was energized and Republican turnout isn't. And so the president has to get that. And on, on the issue, you know, you, <coughs> Republicans are not blocking investigations. If there's they're anything that hasn't been blocked, they're just I mean, not investigating. We're talking about investigations 24 hours a day here. But so they are just there are lots not of investigations. And Republicans are actually on, doing things on health care. I sit on care. judiciary. The we, are not, we are not having the type of hearings that we should have. The investigations I don't think there's any shortage place. of investigations in Washington, D.C. right now. Oh. What do you think I, about I, the strategy? I think, first of all, Trump will not adopt that strategy because he's worried that the House is going to be lost and that would not then look like he is responsible for it. And so he doesn't want to embrace what he perceives he's as gonna potentially. He's going to be responsible either way. Well, but, but he doesn't want to do it up front, number one. Number two, CNN did a poll this week about the top nine issues that Americans care about. Number one was health care. No, immigration. And, no, no. Number one was health care. Eighty-one percent of people said that health care was their top issue. The, under the Trump administration, four million people hmm. have lost their health care. Democrats want to run on that. Democrats want to run on immigration because 76 sure, yeah. percent of Americans hate what the president is doing to separate families. The number two issue was the economy, yet wages have been flat or lost ground in the first the pool, two quarters the, of this. The poll I so, saw had flipped immigration and health care as number one and two. But, but to your point, I think this August has been lost on Democrats and Republicans. You know, it's a news cycle that's open. There's not a lot going on. And what have Republicans been having to deal with? Omarosa. What have Democrats have had to deal with? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, no. We I are not... And Governor Cuomo. Please don't These are the stories that have taken let, up let me, the me, oxygen instead of health care, immigration, jobs, the economy. Yes, no, let me it's a shame. Let me what Democrats have been doing this August. Democrats have been in districts. Democrats have been out talking to voters. Democrats have been registering voters. Oh, that's Democrats not my point. have so been very active. The point is, yeah, people but, like Omaroso and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have dominated this so, August news cycle that was ripe for other people, smarter people, to come in and put these messages, these more important messages, front and center. So one other thing the Democrats have been forced to uh, answer questions about has to do with whether or not Nancy Pelosi uh, should continue to be the Democratic leader, whether as speaker or not. Take a listen to some of the, just, just a few of the uh, 60 House Democratic candidates who have said that they will not necessarily support Pelosi. I won't vote for Nancy Pelosi because we need new leadership in Washington. That's why I won't be voting for Nancy Pelosi for leader. Will you vote for Nancy Pelosi? Probably not. 
Well, let me just tell you. I think that. Will you vote for Nancy Pelosi? I will vote Nancy Pelosi. Let me just tell you that um, with all of the races that are going on, Leader Pelosi is the first one to say the most important thing you need to do is win. People are working their districts. When we take over, and I'm very optimistic that that's going to happen, <laughs> I am certainly hoping that it is going to be a very large number. She has postone, postponed the elections until December. The leadership but to elections. The leadership yeah. elections. But to have a massive change, people are going to be trying to figure out how they go about becoming a new congressperson, all of that. There have been lots of discussions about, you know, whether or not there's going to be a leadership change. I'm in my eighth year, and I will tell you that those discussions have happened every single time we're in this uh, cycle. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi is going to be the next leader of the Democratic Party. So, but here's the interesting thing. T look at Connor Lamb. Uh, and, you know, Connor Lamb ran and won a very, in my old congressional district saying he wasn't going to vote for Nancy Pelosi. Now he says, I'll vote for whoever the Democrats mm -hmm. nominate. Right. So, you know, you, you, they can run all these ads saying mm -hmm. what they're going to do. They come to Washington, they, they, the whip gets cracked, people get in line, and not Pelosi is the first. I, I am a Nancy Pelosi fan. I feel like he, she is a strong woman. She's been the best, the best speaker since I've been president. Since I've been president, since I've been wow. alive, basically. <laughs> That's what Rick but I, yes. what I, you can't yes. run for president. But let me just, just say, you know, I know I can't I run can't. for president. But let me she just say, born in, she was born, she's born in Canada. Canada. Yes. If yeah. it's not Nancy Pelosi, then the, yeah. the Republicans will put up another boogeyman to be able to say, oh, okay. if it's not Nancy Pelosi, it's going to be this person. Thanks, one and so, all, for being on, here. People. We appreciate it, especially you, President Granholm, oh. one of the most powerful Catholics in this country, named more than 100 times in a shocking report about predator priests. Where's the accountability for 